Okay guys, in this video, we're gonna go through a process by which we can determine which of our resonance structures is the most stable form and the preferred form uh, that we have. To do that, we do something called formal charges, okay? So basically, if we have multiple resonance structures, there's kind of a mathematical way to figure out uh, which is the preferred bonding state for the different elements, okay? And it kind of goes back to this idea of um, how many valence electrons do they have to start and how many valence electrons uh, would they like to share to kind of keep them the most stable. So we're going to start this off with a little video for you guys. Formal charges are a way of keeping track of the electronic charges in molecules. They are calculated as the number of valence electrons associated with the free atom minus the number of electrons associated with the atom in a molecule or ion. The rules for calculating the number of valence electrons in a molecule are illustrated by the example of HCl. Unshared electron pairs are assigned entirely to the atom carrying them, and shared electron pairs are assigned equally to the two atoms sharing them. The free hydrogen atom has one valence electron. The formal charge on hydrogen in HCl is calculated to be zero. The free chlorine atom has seven valence shell electrons. The formal charge on chlorine in HCl is also calculated to be zero. Notice that the formal charge on both atoms in HCl is zero. Remember that the formal charge is not an estimate of the actual charge on the atoms. We know that in HCl, the chlorine bears a partial negative charge because it is more electronegative than hydrogen. Formal charge calculations can often help us identify the most stable isomers of molecules. Consider the isomeric compounds, hydrogen cyanide and hydrogen isocyanide. Both structures have octets of electrons about carbon and nitrogen. The formal charge on carbon and hydrogen cyanide is zero. Similarly, the formal charge on nitrogen is zero. In hydrogen isocyanide, the formal charge on carbon is minus one. The formal charge on nitrogen is plus one. Because the formal charges are non-zero and hydrogen isocyanide, we can predict that this isomeric form is less stable than hydrogen cyanide, as found to be the case. Formal charges can also be helpful in evaluating alternative resonance structures. Let's consider nitrogen dioxide, a molecule that contains an odd electron. We can draw two reasonable Lewis structures, but which more closely describes the nitrogen dioxide molecule? Notice that in one structure the unpaired electron is on oxygen, and in the other it's on nitrogen. In the first structure, the formal charges on all the atoms are zero. In the second structure, nitrogen bears a formal positive charge, and one of the oxygens bears a formal negative charge. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. Nevertheless, a formal positive charge on nitrogen and a formal negative charge on oxygen is an indication that this resonance structure contributes less to the ground state structure of NO2 than the previous one with the unpaired electron on oxygen. Okay, so if you take a look at that, we can now take this idea of the math and actually determine which one of our uh, <clears throat> possible resonance structures is the best one to do that. So what I'm doing over here is I'm actually just drawing up the three different resonance structures for N2O. Okay, so we have N2O, and uh, we have one more to draw up. So we have nitrogen single bonded to nitrogen to a triple bond to oxygen. And then we got to put our electrons on here. So we should have... In this case, three and then one. So here's our, our possible resonance structures for nitrogen dioxide, or dinitrogen monoxide, I should say. Okay, where we have a total of 16 electrons between other three things. Um, where we have a total of 16 electrons between the three different possibilities here. Uh, and if we put our little arrows in to show resonance structures between here, remind us of that. And now we start doing the math on this, okay? So for the nitrogen in the first one, so let's take a look at this first nitrogen. Uh, 
It has uh, five valence electrons, and the number of unshared electrons on this particular nitrogen here that we're doing, let's do the first one there. If we take a look at that, it has unshared is one, two, three, four of those. So we're going to subtract away four. And then it has two bonds, so we're going to subtract away two for the number of bonds. And if we do that, we got five minus four minus two is a negative one. So this nitrogen has a formal charge of negative one. Since we got a negative one here, uh, that tells us that our first nitrogen is a negative one. Okay. Now we go on to the second nitrogen, and the second nitrogen, we have no unshared electrons, so we still start with the five that we had before, but now we are going to just subtract away one for each of the bonds. So it's five minus four. Five minus four is a plus one, so in this case we have a plus one on that. Go to our oxygen. Oxygen starts with a six, and we're going to subtract away four for the unshared electrons, and then subtract away two for the uh, two bonds in the oxygen, and that gives us a zero. So oxygen here is a zero. So we're a plus one, minus one, and a zero, which is not bad. It's not ideal. Ideally, we'd have all zeros, but that's, you know, our, um, what we have here. Moving down to the next one, <clears throat> we end up with the nitrogen is, again, a five. If we're taking a look at this nitrogen now here. So it starts with a five. We're going to subtract away two. That gives us three. Subtract away three more. So five minus two minus three is a zero. So this one becomes a zero. If we go to the nitrogen to the right of that, we start with a five minus four. That's going to be a plus one. Okay. If we go to the right of that, we have oxygen, which is six minus six minus one. So now that's a minus one. Okay, so we have a minus one, a plus one, and a zero for the first one. For the second one, we get a zero, a plus one, and a minus one. So right now, those two are equal. Neither one of those two are preferred over the other ones. If we go to our bottom one, and we do the bottom one, uh, we start off with nitrogen being a five again over here. But we're going to subtract six and then one more. So this ends up being a negative two. Whereas if we go over to the middle one, we have nitrogen, which is a 5 minus a 4. We end up with a plus 1. And we have oxygen here, which is a 6. Minus 2 is 4. Minus 3 is a plus 1 also. Okay. Now notice, in all three cases, if you add up the different formal charges on the molecule, they will all equal the overall charge on the molecule. So in this case, because dinitrogen monoxide is a neutral molecule, your formal charges should add up to zero. And that does happen in all of our cases here. Okay? If you had a polyatomic ion and you were to add up your formal charges, they would equal the charge on the ion because there is a charge there, so you can't equal zero. Okay? So looking at these three, if we had to pick the best scenarios for these three, uh, we have two that are identical. That's the top two right here. Uh, and the bottom one, because it's a minus two here, is not as good as the other one. So the, this one here would not occur naturally, but the top two would, okay? Now, it seems kind of weird that you, you could get some double bonding and triple bonding being the natural state, but not the other way of triple bonding. But that's just how this one actually works. So if you had to identify the most stable configuration or the most likely resin structure, um, you would choose those top two in this model and not the bottom one, okay? So that's how we do it. Uh, there's another example up on the screen here, NCO minus one. Uh, you can work that one out. It's different resonance structures. And again, when you do that one, keep in mind that the formal charge should add up to a negative one as you practice that one. Okay? And then we'll also have some other practice in class. Thank you.